feet we humbly bow. Oh, do not our suit disdain. Shall we seek Thee, Lord, in vain? Shall we seek Thee, Lord, in vain? Lord, on Thee our souls depend. In compassion Thou descend. Fill our hearts with Thy rich grace. Tune our lips to sing Thy praise. Tune our lips to sing Thy praise. In Thine own appointed way, now we seek Thee, here we say, Lord, we not how to go till a blessing thou bestow, till a blessing thou bestow. When the night is falling and the day is done, I can hear you calling, come.
Hey, good morning. Welcome to Twickenham. Thanks for coming out to be with us today. If you're a guest, we are really glad that you are here. And I know we have uh, a lot of you come to be with mom today, or moms have come into town to be here. So we just welcome all of you. There is a card on the back of the pew in front of you. You can fill that out and place it in the collection plate a little bit later on. Please indicate any prayer requests you have, and we'll be praying over those uh, as soon as we get them. So thanks for coming. Can we, can I just have the moms and the grandmoms and the foster moms all just, all you guys stand up for just a second so we can just say, hey, thank you and we love you. Give you a hand. And uh, just remain standing for just a second, ladies. Just remain standing for just a second. We want to have a prayer with you uh, because what you do is incredibly difficult and important. And for some of us, today is going to be a hard day because our mothers are no longer with us. For some of us, it's a hard day because we want to be mothers and we're not. It's a hard day for a lot of different reasons. So I just want to pray over you and and thank God for you and ask him to bless you. So let's bow together. Holy Father, we are grateful today for these women that stand among us and the women that are uh, far away from us right now in other cities that we couldn't be with today. We're thankful for our moms, and we're thankful for the sacrifices they made for us to give us life and to raise us up, the things they went without so that we could go with. Uh, We're thankful for their patience with us and their teaching. And right now, I just want to lift all of these precious women up to you and ask you to bless them, each of them in the unique way that she needs to be blessed. If it is strength for a struggle, I pray that you will give that to her. If it is healing from a hurt, I pray that you will give that. If it is encouragement in the middle of um, a depressing season, I pray that you will encourage. If it is health, I pray that you will restore. If there is fear, I pray that you will give these precious women courage. If it is anxiety, I pray that you will give them peace. And I pray today that they will know that they are loved by you, that you know each of them by name, and that you know every anxious, fearful, and frightened moment, and that you are there to comfort and to heal and to encourage. Bless these precious women, and protect them from anything and anyone who would hurt them in any way. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you, ladies. You can be seated, and we love you so much. Thank you. We will be making a donation uh, to uh, Agape uh, in North Alabama uh, to, um, in honor of our mothers here today. Uh, lots of times churches will give gifts. We're choosing to do that in a way that honors you by blessing children. So just so glad you're here. Let's stand. We're going to sing some more and praise the Lord. Thanks for coming out and being with us today. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Our God, you reign forever. On wings like eagles, strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord. Our God, you reign forever.
you do not faint, you won't grow weary. You're the defender of the weak. You comfort those in need. You lift us up on wings like eagles. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord. You are the everlasting God. Wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord. You won't grow weary. You're the defender of the weak. You comfort those in need. You lift us up on wings like eagles. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. We will wait. For joy, you heavens. Rejoice, you earth. Burst into song, you mountains. For the Lord comforts his people and will have compassion on his afflicted ones. But Zion said, the Lord has forsaken me. The Lord has forgotten me. Can a mother forget the baby at her breast? And have no compassion on the child she has born, though she may forget, I will not forget you. See, I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. Your walls are ever before me. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people. Surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people. Surround us, Lord. Surround us, O Lord. We need to be.
first gray hair. She was sitting in front of me and Barry Kingsley at the Duluth Church of Christ on a Sunday morning sometime around 1970, I think. I don't recall where Barry's mother was sitting, but she was probably one row behind me and Barry because neither of our mothers got on board with that whole, your child just needs a lot of positive reinforcement thing that was beginning to catch fire in the culture. They were more into old school discipline when old school discipline wasn't all that old. And besides that, me and Barry were a handful. Anyway, sometime in a quiet moment in that service, which was probably during communion, uh, I noticed a, a single tress of soft gray hair nestled in my mother's otherwise brunette mane 
And just one little six inch long thread shining in the fluorescent light of Sunday morning church. You ever had a, an existential moment? A, a moment where the very foundations of life, of your life, are dramatically called into question. An event, a realization, this shakes you to your core and forces you to confront realities to which you were heretofore oblivious. That was my existential moment, one of them, that, that one gray filament in my mother's hair. A cold chill ran through me. My pulse quickened. I could hear my heartbeat thrumming in my chest. And I leaned back against the hard pew because back in those days, soft pews were for soft Christians. <laughs> I leaned back against the pew and I, I whispered, I mean, it was, I didn't say it loudly, but I whispered it audibly, my mother is getting old. She was 36, maybe? <laughs> so I, okay, so I was a little dramatic as a kid. Actually, I was a drama queen as a kid, okay? Which is probably one of the reasons my mother started graying in her 30s. So, uh, but that and she had four other children, and they were all handfuls as well. But here's the, and, that, and, that, and that's where the irony is. Our mothers give us life. And then we age our mothers. And if you think about it, you and I contributed absolutely nothing to the process of our being born into the world. We are freely given the unmerited gift of life. It is the biological equivalent of God's grace. And like God's grace... Life itself comes at a price. And it doesn't matter whether we enter our mother's lives through the convulsive contractions of birth or through the complexities of legal adoption or any other way we come into the lives of the women that we call our mothers. Any way it happens, our mothers give up a little of their youth every single day just so they can watch us grow older. Maybe that's why when God wanted to talk about his love for us, he compared himself to a mother. He did, after all, give us birth. In a very famous poem African -American, uh, called The Creation, African-American poet James Weldon Johnson captured the tender mother-like love of God. He writes, up from the bed of the river, God scooped the clay, and there by the bank of the river, he kneeled him down. And there the great God Almighty, who shaped the earth in the middle of his hand, and who lit the sun and fixed it in the sky, who flung the stars to the far corners of the universe, this great God kneeled down, toiling over a lump of clay, here it is, like a mammy bending over her baby until he had shaped it into a man, and into the clay he blew the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Isaiah 49, the passage we heard just a moment ago, can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child that she bore? Though she may forget, God says, I will not forget you. See, I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. Your walls are ever before me. And sometimes, because life is so full of pain and trial, God's compassion wells up into active comfort. In Isaiah 66, verse 13, he said, as a mother comforts her child, so I will comfort you. God wanted his people to know that when they were hurt or troubled, that like a mother, he would be there with a comforting hand and an understanding heart. In fact, the Hebrew word for compassion, if you, if you take the word apart, in Hebrew it means womb-like mother love. That's how God feels about his children. More years than not, my, my mom has been a caregiver to somebody. 
And she began caring for children when she was around 26 years old. That's when I was born. I was the first, and there were four others. And then one of my siblings, my sister Jean, was developmentally disabled. And though I never heard my mom complain about it, caring for Jean was like having a baby in the house for 43 years. Figured conservatively, that comes out to about 78,475 diapers. And those were cloth diapers. Everything you do for yourself in the daily course of living, my mom had to do for my sister, Jean. Food preparation, feeding, bathing, changing clothes, toileting, keeping up with and giving medicines, even moving from one room to another. It was an entirely consuming task, and it happened every day for over four decades. And for a stretch of that time, mom was caring for her own mother and her mother-in-law in the same house. Most of us have been blessed with mothers who defended, nurtured, loved, and comforted us. But if you didn't, even if your mom was the one who hurt you, and sadly that happens, I hope it helps you to know that God knows how to do for you what my mother did for my sister. I love my mom. You hear me talk about her from time to time. She's watching this morning. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. But my mom's a sinner. And if my mom, being a sinner, knows how to take care of someone who cannot take care of themselves, then God knows how to take care of you. The prophet Hosea spoke of God's teaching and tenderness with Israel. He said, it was I who taught Ephraim how to walk, taking him by the arms, but they did not realize it was I who healed them. I led them with cords of human kindness, with ties of love. To them, I was like one who lifts a little child to the cheek, and I bent down to feed them. Hosea said that God knows how to defend a mother like a bear robbed of her clubs in, uh, cubs in, Hebrew, uh, in Hosea chapter 13. Even Jesus spoke like a mother when he looked down on Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who killed the prophets and stoned those sent to you. How often have I longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you were not willing. It's in Luke chapter 13. Now, I know that any time somebody points out these passages that show God through a feminine lens, somebody's going to react to that. Somebody's going to say, yeah, well, God's always referred to with masculine pronouns. God's a he and that's all there is to it. And then other people are going to hear these passages and they're going to go, well, they, I feel vindicated and I feel legitimized and I feel demarginalized and I feel affirmed and I'll kind of post up with a see I told you so kind of attitude and both sides miss the point here. We're kind of dragging God into our culture war and that's not how it's supposed to be. Both sides want to make God over into their image and into their likeness when scripture plainly teaches it's the other way around. God made us in his image, male and female. Everything that exists in the universe, including the sexes, started with God. So the only agenda that is available to us when we talk about the father-like or the mother-like qualities of God is God's agenda, not ours. So what do these feminine images of God teach us about God's agenda. Look again at that Isaiah 59 passage. Can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have compassion on the child she is born? When we first hear that question, can a mother forget? We're like, no, no way a mother can forget. But then we see newspaper stories or stories online about moms who forgot. We know stories. In fact, some of us may be a child who's been forgotten by a mother. And if that's where you are today, I hope you'll hear how much God loves and cares for you, even if your mom didn't. And then I know that some of us will visit our mothers or have visited them recently. And you had to remind them of who you are. And you didn't take it personally. 
that they'd forgotten because the dementia has been leeching away their ability to remember for some time now. And it's awful. It's awful for you. It's awful for her. I, I know this is holy ground that I'm treading on here, but I just want to give you a word of hope about all that. No matter how much disease takes away from your loved ones, it cannot take away the fact that God remembers you and God remembers your loved one, your mother, your father, your spouse, your child. They may forget. God will not forget. He knows your name. He knows theirs. He will remember. Then there's that Isaiah 66 passage, the one where it says, as a mother comforts her child, so I will comfort you. One of the things I love about the Bible is its honesty. The, the heroes and heroines are never pristine. The paths they walk are never straight. Their failures are featured as prominently as their successes, and God is just as honest with us about life. He never comes across like a prosperity gospel preacher telling you that everything's going to be okay, it's going to be one victory after the next, you're just going to live on top of the mountain all the time. In fact, the story God invites us to is one that wanders through valleys and shivers in shadows and ends up on a skull-shaped hill where three crosses cut into the skyline. God does not promise a flower strewn journey, but he does promise that when we are weary or broken or tired or sick, that he will comfort us the way a mother sits up with a fevered child all night long. What else do these images of God's mother-like love tell us about his agenda? That passage from Luke, the one that, where Jesus looks down on Jerusalem and laments, I've, I wanted to gather you to myself the way a hen gathers her chicks. That passage teaches us that, that God's agenda is to protect us. That's why mother hens gather their chicks under their wings. In fact, God was so intent on protecting us from the consequences of our broken relationship with him that in the person of Jesus, he took those consequences himself. Jesus was willing to give himself away in order to give us life. If you're one of the guys serving communion, now's a good time for you to head on back and get ready to serve. I began this morning uh, telling you about my mom's first gray hair. Now her hair is all gray. It is soft and it is fine and it is her crown and glory and she earned every silver strand. When one of us fractured a bone uh, or underwent a surgery, a, a little time worried off our mother's biological clock. When one of us suffered a broken heart, her heart gave up a few beats. When we crept in ninja-like after a missed curfew, she had already been up pacing the floor. And when each of us left home to follow our own way, she let us go. And we took a little bit of her with us. Our mothers give us life, and we age our mothers. We contribute absolutely nothing to the process of being brought into this world. We are freely given the gift, the unmerited gift of life. It's the biological equivalent of God's grace. And like God's grace, life itself comes with a price. It costs our mothers their youth, and it cost God his son. Poet Alison Woodard captured the mother-like nature of God in a poem. The words serve as an apt invitation for you and me to gather around the table of the Lord this morning to remember the sacrifice Jesus made and what it cost him. She writes, To be a mother is to suffer, to travail in the dark, Stretched and torn, exposed in humiliation, subjected to indignities for the sake of new life. To be a mother is to say, this is my body, broken for you. And in the next instant, in response to the child's primal hunger, to say, this is my body, take and eat. Let's pray together. 
Father, thank you for being our father and our mother, for loving us with mother-like compassion, for not forgetting us, and for knowing each of us by name. Thank you for hurting when we hurt and rejoicing when we rejoice. Thank you for the freedom you have given us and forgive us when we have used that freedom to put distance between us and you. More than anything this morning, thank you for your son, the sacrifice that you gave in order to give us life. Through him, we are born anew. And so this morning, as we share this bread, we remember we do not forget the sacrifice that he made. Bless this bread to the nourishment of our souls. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. The Lord our God is with you. He is mighty to save. The Lord will take great delight in you. He will quiet.
you would hear the Lord rejoice, rejoicing over you with singing. Father, at the death of Jesus, there was blood and water. He shed his blood so that we could live. We remember that awful, violent moment now and rejoice that out of that violence came the possibility of peace. And out of that pain came relief. And that out of that death came life. You are an awesome God. Thank you for this sacrifice. May we honor it by remembering and then carrying the memory with us throughout the rest of this week. May it change how we interact with everyone we meet and with you. In Jesus' name, amen.
God. Sing a simple song of love to my Savior, to my Jesus. I'm grateful for the things you've done, my loving Savior, oh precious Jesus. My heart is glad that you call me your own. There's no place I'd rather be than in your arms of love. In your arms of love. Holding me still. Holding me near. In your arms of love. In your arms of love. Holding me still. Holding me near. Holding me still. Holding me church said what a great place to be the arms of love just like a mother just like our savior jesus christ hey a couple things as we close uh, don't forget dinner and devo is coming up shortly in just a couple weeks in fact tickets go on sale today i believe you can get season passes all kinds of good stuff to join us on those great wednesday nights when we're all here together for that meal and that fellowship time and teaching together Guess what else is coming up? Since summer is here, that means our children's program is fixing to ratchet up, and we need volunteers. If you can help volunteer, you need to contact Amy Smith here at the office. You can call or use her email address, amy at twickenham.org. Don't make us beg for the next three weeks, okay? Just go ahead and sign up right now. Get it over with. Help us out. Awesome. Hey, if you helped out with HICLC, take it back to the track race thingy yesterday, Would you stand up real quick? Anybody who helped, a volunteer, if you ran, if you rode a bicycle to lead the group, if you did, hey, thank you very much. Thank you. Fantastic. So, have you ever had one of those existential moments? (laughs) Where you get an acute sense of nothing you've ever fully realized before where everything comes into focus and vision and clarity, and you sit back with pulse raising and heart throbbing. I had one of those this morning. I was looking up at Jody, and the light shining so brightly off of his head that I was blinded. (laughs) And I realized, not that he's old, I realized that he's still a drama queen. <laughs> you haven't grown out of it. My mom is Your mom, happy birthday, Miss Vickery. I mean, happy Mother's Day. <laughs> hey, it's been a great morning. Moms, thank you. Have a great Mother's Day. Sing one more verse. Let's stand of that great hymn we began with, and we will close the morning. Grant that all may seek and find Thee, our God, supremely kind. Heal the sick, the captive free. Let us all rejoice in Thee. Let us all rejoice in Thee. God, we 
we humble ourselves before you and we thank you for being our father, but we also thank you for loving us as only a mother can. We thank you for sending your son to give us eternal life, to sacrifice himself so that we can have um, that relationship with you, that relationship that lasts. And Lord, we are mindful this morning of all of our own uh, mothers. We're mindful of all the mothers in our lives. And we just pray your blessing on them as they go about the business of raising our children and of bringing new life into the world. We're prayerful for those that are not there yet, that want to be there. And we pray for healing in their bodies. And we pray for patience as they wait on your timing. Lord, we pray that you be with all of us as we go out, that we can be the light, be the example that you gave us life to be. Pray all of this through your Son and always by your Holy Spirit. And amen.